An Olympic champion turned war hero endures horrific conditions adrift at sea and then at the hands of his Japanese captors as a POW and lives to forgive his tormentors. That is the plot of the movie Unbroken, which opens tomorrow. It is also the real-life story of World War II veteran Louis Zamperini. Tonight, a rare interview with the best-selling author who brought his story to life. Here again is Chief Washington Correspondent James Rosen. Berlin, Germany, 1936. Adolf Hitler presides over the Olympic Games. American track star Jesse Owens is that year's sensation, shattering records along with Nazi claims of racial superiority. And we're very glad to come out on top. Thank you very kindly. Also competing that summer is Louis Zamperini of Torrance, California, who finished the 5,000-meter event with a stunning sprint. Uh, Hitler's in a box high up. Miss Foster came over. He said, uh, Hitler wants to see you. I went over, reached up. He reached way down, just barely touched hands and shook hands. And he, all he said was, ah, oh, the boy with the fast finish. Zamperini went on to serve in the Army Air Corps in World War II. And on a rescue mission over the Pacific, his plane went down, killing all but three of the 11 men on board. I can remember getting in the raft and pulling the other two guys in and uh, the pilot's head was bleeding. As far as America knew, that's where Louis Zamperini died, reported killed in action in May 1944. In reality, Louis would spend 47 terrifying days and nights aboard that small life raft, drifting with two comrades some 2,000 miles across the Pacific. I think Louis's survival came down to a tremendous act of will. Laura Hillenbrand is the author of Unbroken, a World War II story of survival, resilience and redemption, a runaway bestseller that chronicled Zamperini's singular life. It is now a major motion picture with a Christmas release directed by Angelina Jolie. To tell Zamperini's story, Hillenbrand interviewed him 75 times, amassing hundreds of hours of tape-recorded sessions. He told me that it never once crossed his mind in the time he was out there that he was going to die, which is almost irrational. And even one of the other guys with him on the very first day was saying, we're going to die, we're, we're going to die. die. And that man did die. Louis survived, and amazingly, what happened next was even worse than being lost at sea. His body weight shrunken by half, Zamperini's raft was spotted and rescued by a Japanese ship that swiftly dispatched him to a series of brutal POW camps where he would be tortured, starved, experimented on, humiliated, and beaten savagely day in and day out for two years. One particularly sadistic tormentor was a camp commandant named Matsuhiro Watanabe, a.k.a. the bird. If I looked away from his eyes, he punched me out for looking away. If I stared in his eyes, he punched me for staring in his eyes. Every day he did something to me. Louis had a remarkable ability to push away negative thoughts and to grasp onto the most slender hope and to believe, to always believe, he was going to be able to think his way out of circumstances. And he did quite brilliantly think his way out of every terrible circumstance he got in. And he was a very willful guy. He was a defiant man. He had been a real troublemaker as a youth, and he turned all of that defiance against death and against the people who were determined to destroy him. And that kept him alive. I now invite the representatives of the Emperor of Japan to sign the instrument of surrender. On September 2, 1945, the Japanese surrendered. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world. Zamperini would be freed and repatriated, a national hero risen from the dead. In 1946, he married Cynthia Applewhite, a woman he met after he returned home. Though he'd physically left behind his World War II experiences, Louis remained haunted by memories of the bird and soon descended into alcoholism. The nightmares got worse and worse to the point where I was out drinking uh, every night with bu buddies and coming in late. But the man who had so often cheated death and forged second chances for himself was about to see it happen again. God speaks with authority through the pages of this book. In 1949, Cynthia took Louis to a revival meeting featuring a young preacher named Billy Graham. The young evangelist shook Louis to his very core. He said a lot of people will reject Christ because they prefer darkness rather than light. And I was preferring my rotten life.
on a raft you pray uh, God get me get me through this alive and I'll seek you and serve you in prison camp all my buddies we all prayed the same then we come home alive and we don't make any attempt to th even thank God I started thinking about the prayers on the raft and in prison camp and that did it I thought what a heal I did come home alive I'm alive and I turned my back on God and so I went forward and that was it when I got off of my knees I knew I was through getting drunk, I knew I was through smoking, I knew I had forgiven all my guards. Zamperini even made a special trip to Japan to meet and forgive the men who had treated him so brutally. Actually when that happened, that was a healing. Uh, when you hate somebody, uh, it doesn't hurt them, it hurts you. If you want to survive in this world, you've got to learn to forgive. He dedicated the rest of his life to that principle, remaining active in his church. Since then I have had an unquenchable joy Giving inspirational speeches and even founding a camp for troubled youth. Hi, George. Oh, hi. It's something about helping people that builds up your immune system. I turn out to be the kind of guy that likes to help people. In July, at the age of 97, Louis finally succumbed to mortality. What were your emotions like when you learned that he had died? Oh, I, it broke my heart. I, I had kind of begun to believe he was immortal. We have an Olympic athlete in all count. Few lives are as tailor-made for the big screen, and few receive the high-level attention from Hollywood that Unbroken has. How was it that Angelina Jolie came to be the director? She read the book, she had read the treatment of Louis's story, and she very much wanted to be the one to tell his story on screen, that she felt she needed it herself, as well as to, to be the one conveying it to the world, because she was so inspired by it. What is Louis Zamperini's legacy? I think Louis has become an inspiration for a generation of people. He, he is a man who survived the seemingly unsurvivable and I think all of us can look at his life, can look at the things that he got through and then look back at our own troubles and think, you know, if he got through that, why can't I get through this? He turned everything into something to prevail over and we can all learn something from that. In Washington, James Rosen, Fox News. Now there is a great movie to go see over the holidays.